Welcome to another episode of the Pay Play Profit Podcast. I'm your host, Jessica May, and I'm back in the podcast house today with Ashley Newman, our integrator at The Bottom Line. Welcome back to the show, Ashley. Yay! I'm so glad to be here. Yeah, I'm glad you're here too, because today we're diving into annual planning 2022, crafting one thing commitments for growth in 2023. Now, I love this because it's kind of an EOS activity, but even if you're not on EOS, it applies to every single business. And Ashley and I are going to pull back the curtain and talk to you about this fabulous trust builder. Now that I've got that out of the way, I want to make sure we set the table for today's episode. If you're new, listen up. And if you've been here before, you know the drill. It's time for us to share our TBL truth that, quote, every decision is a profit decision and profit is measured in time, energy, and money. I'd also love to remind you that when you think of finance and tax, just think of ice cream. Three cones, one for time, one for energy, and one for money. And what's the goal, Newman? Triple scoops. Triple scoops. That's exactly right. Because when we have triple scoops, it means the best profit decisions are happening with our time, energy, and money which means more pay, play, and profit. Here we go. Newman and Jess back together again for a visionary integrator episode. I love these episodes. Yes. They're fun. We get to like talk about stuff about the business that impacts all the time, energy, money, profit, pay, play, profit. And one thing that can really impact a business like nobody's business is trust or not having it. How do you feel about that when I say that? I think that's a very valid statement for sure. Not only with your team, but with your clients. Yeah. I think trust is a very important ingredient and in our journey in EOS for the last two years and just this last 10 years in business. One of my favorite books is a little fable by Patrick Lencioni called The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. If you've never read that book, I would encourage you to pick that book up and read it. It's a good read, isn't it, Newman? Yes, I love it. That's very good. Yeah. And the five dysfunctions at the very base of this pyramid he shares you in the, with you in the book is trust. That is the foundation for every relationship. I'm also a Brene Brown junkie. Um, I love her anatomy of trust and how she defines it through her braving acronym. And trust is a big deal. And building trust is a 24-7 opportunity. So I think that's one thing that I really enjoy about this particular activity because this is centered around our annual planning. So every business should be doing some form of planning, right? Yes. And in our business, how often do we focus on planning? What does our planning cycle look like? So our pulsing is uh, well, three quarterlies and one annual. Three That's quarterlies right. so. and one annual. And guys, every time I've showed up to these EOS kind of sessions, they give you an agenda, which is great. They give you a good framework. But Newman is our EOS champion. She's always going above and beyond and the extra mile. And this is where we get to really benefit from her fact finder, which is a nine on the Colby, which is also a trust builder to help you learn about your team and how they expand their energy and operate. And we invest a lot of time, I think, in trust building activities. There's quite a number of trust builders. But when we showed up to our annual planning back at the end of 2021, she introduced this one thing commitment exercise to us because that was our actual first annual that we had had under the EOS umbrella, right? That's right. That's right. Full uh, first full year within it. Um, we had it. Yes. Well, that's the simple answer. Yeah. Yes, that was our first and we're coming <laughs> up on our second year because we're almost 24 months into our EOS cycle or 36 months of marathoning, I guess, if you will. So The reason why we wanted to do this episode is some of you might actually be diving into your planning, hopefully, around the time of this episode. And if not, I think you can do this exercise at any point in time, depending on when you're hearing this. But Newman, why don't you tell us like what EOS says the one thing commitment is? We've established we do it because it is a trust builder. 
and we started it with our leadership team. But tell us a little bit about it and the process. Sure. So the way they present it is that it's an exercise that you just take a moment during your annual planning uh, for the whole leadership team to sit down. And um, the way that you go about it is uh, one person on the leadership team is the person in the hot seat, basically. And everyone else on the leadership team takes a moment and they write down uh, the most admirable trait for that team member and the, mo and the one thing that they would like for them to start or stop doing in the next year. And this is a great time for feedback for the leadership team to give that one leadership, mem uh, leadership team member that's on the hot seat some things to think about in order to craft their one thing. So after the leadership team uh, has taken their time to write that down, reflect it, then the way that we went about it is that we had everyone go around and do the most admirable trait around the room. And then after that, you would go through and present your start or stop statement that you would like that team member to think about doing in the next year. And then after that's presented, so for instance, if you've got five people on your leadership team, the one person's on the hot seat, then you're going to get four statements that are start, stop, um, potentially. And then the team member that's been given the statements will take a moment and craft their one thing commitment from that feedback and the fee uh the one statement the one thing statement starts like this it's in the year uh, so for us it was in 2022 i commit to start to stop fill in whichever one and then you finish the sentence for whatever you're committing to starting or stopping doing from their feedback for the next year. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I so just, that's the essential process. Of yeah. yeah. And I just love it. Number one, I love the whole, it is absolutely a trust builder because you do have to be vulnerable enough to be honest with both your praise and your desires for that other human. Like I think when I thought through it, you know, it is a start or stop statement. It's not like you're picking out all the things you want the person to start and stop. And when I look, when I um, went through this exercise and I had to think about start or stop spa statements for my team members, my colleagues, the people I was building trust with, my frame of mind and my perspective was how did I want them to come into the fullness of their potential, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it reminded me of a time, I always do this, what would Ray say, who's been my therapist for almost a decade. And um, I told him one time that I wanted to be able to stop yelling because I, I, have, I have shared before that I could actually wrestle with the best of them. I'm a champion yeller <laughs> and I was raised by a champion yeller. And I've produced some yellers in my uh, in my family. And it's great when you need to sp speak loudly and proudly, but your tone and all that stuff you can add to it, it isn't so awesome for everyone. And so I've had to work on this over the years. And I kept saying, Ray, I want to stop yelling. And he said, I need you to focus on the positive thing that you want to, you desire, because to say stop, is indicating that you're doing something bad and terrible and you're just kind of reinforcing that negative part that you don't enjoy or you don't like and just continue to reinforce that in your brain. And so he had me write, write on a post-it, I speak gently and constructively. So instead of me putting on a post-it note, stop yelling, which is what I had been doing to try to train, retrain myself and rewire myself, in your frame of mind, I would say something like, I, I will start speaking gently and constructively. And so that was actually a very positive thing. And I've used that over the years when I get start stop conversations like this. That's kind of the frame of mind I personally come from of like, well, what do I actually want for myself or that person? And can I frame it in the positive versus the negative? Isn't that interesting, those little tricks like that? Because you just don't think about that. But I will have to tell you, having been involved in 
and being a, a byproduct of addiction and recovery myself, those stop statements can be very consciousness building. And sometimes people need to hear it that way. Sometimes people need to hear, I need you to stop doing XXX because they don't necessarily affirm in the other direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sometimes people need to hear that you need to stop because they're not picking up on the other part. <laughs> so it just depends on where you're at in your process, where you're at in your relationship with a person. How much trust do you need to build? I mean, from my perspective, like, that seems like a lot to process in your head over such a simple exercise, but there's the inside the mind of me. Oh, yeah. I would have to say, too, is that it, if I could sit and, and just think of reflect about the whole experience last year when we did it, there is a certain measure of tension and maybe a little bit of trepidation on, like, how are they going to take this? Or what if I say this the wrong way? Or so it is, it is a way just be courageous, just be courageous. Like, I think that's the, the fruit from it is well worth the risk. So I, that's, I think that's my biggest is that, um, don't hold, don't, don't do the sugar coat. Don't do the, the, the fluffy, be real. You know, because it's only going to it's only going to be helpful for you as a team if you're real. So, yeah, because I'm very much of a tend to like to have the peace, you know, keep the peace. I don't want to rustle anybody's feathers usually. But if it's worth the risk, it's worth it. So yeah. do it. Just I do love it. that. <laughs> it is a risky game when you do things like that, when you play all out, like full court press, like they do in basketball or something, you know. Especially like the first time. Yeah. The first time. Yeah. So like, again, if you're making this a commitment for your, and you should, for your leadership team to continue growing together um, and growing your trust, being vulnerable uh, and receiving, you know, um, maybe not receiving feedback from others it's a it's a it's definitely a muscle that you have to learn to use continually to do it graciously uh, yeah. receive and, and kindly yeah and you know you learn along the way that being kind is really about being honest and you can be honest without being vulnerable so there's an element to honesty that requires vulnerability which require and vulnerability requires risk just saying the honest thing, like just putting it out there matter of factly, that really doesn't take much risk, but it, it just takes a commitment to being like, I'm going to be kind by being honest, but I'm also going to be vulnerable. And that's what feels very risky. And you're just not sure you're trying to own all the emotions of everyone and how they're going to take it and how they're going to feel about it. And EOS is all about just chase the greater good the greater good, the decision that, you know, and it takes me back to that scripture and the word about iron sharpening iron. And if you go to the EOS life that Gino Wickman wrote, one of the whole chapters is about doing things with people you love. And he even uses your leadership team as an example that these should be people that you experience highs and lows with, that you laugh with, that you can be scared with, that you can also get in the trenches with and, and be vulnerable together. And I don't think this is just for leadership teams. I think this is just for teams, period. And a team is two people. <laughs> so I think this one thing commitment is just completely universal. And I think extremely beneficial and I loved it because we do themes for the year and we do words of the year. But I'm like, I'm almost sold out for we just need this across the whole company. We just need one thing commitments because this is a commitment you're making to your partner that you're going to. And then it means something to you and it means something to the people that you're doing this thing with. So I loved it. So most admirable trait. What, are, what do you want the person to start or stop doing? I loved the whole sharing of the most admirable trade. It's very life-giving, very praising, recognizing, rewarding. And let's face it, especially when you sit in a leadership position, you don't, that's not always what happens with you in that seat. You're busy giving that, but you're not always getting that. That's so very true. You're right. <laughs> and I loved you're that so part. 
the most. But then I loved what people had to share. I mean, in our environment and in our culture, it was very vulnerable and 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 real. But we were also, we think for the most part, most of the time, we're very generous about how we think of each other. Not always, <laughs> but most of the time. So very cool. So I guess we could give them an, an example of what the one thing commitment statement looks like because you and I have ours for 2022. So would you care for us to pull back the curtain and tell the team, tell the listeners we'll what we it. committed to do in 2022? Yes. You want to go first or you want me to? Yes. Go go. All right. So my one thing um, commitment statement is as follows. In 2022, I commit to start being more agile without losing confidence. Mm. I loved it. When you came up with it, I loved it. And so one of the things you were telling me before, I think you mentioned it before, is like part of having a commitment is you have to check in and see how you're doing on the commitment, right? That's right. So during your, um, so you set the, you set the statement in your annual and then the following three quarterlies, you do um, a quick check-in with the rest of the leadership team. So you will be checking in and giving a, an update on it every quarter um, when you come together again for your planning. And it doesn't need to be an in-depth and it, they don't ask you to do an in-depth like update. It's just a simple, you can do a uh, same, better, worse. So with your one thing commitment, you restate it and you can say same, better, worse. And then move forward. And for 2022, you said, I commit to start being more agile without losing confidence. And how would you say you're doing with that at this point on September 6th of 2022? Way better. I would say I've done, I've done way better. When I set that statement, it was from direct feedback from a few of you on the t- leadership team about some things that I could start doing better as far as my confidence. And it it really comes from where my confidence comes from when I'm doing a new action is from uh, an in-depth understanding or research behind it before I start movement, which again comes down to my Colby. So it had to be where I start flexing with understanding the amount of information or amount of things I need to know in order to be confident. So what would you say? Do you think I, from your oh, vantage point? Oh, yes. It's amazing. Better? Yeah. I mean, we're through the messy middle part of the year. We're kind of on the down slope, but I'm not, I'm going to say that very cautiously. <laughs> but I definitely think that it's way better. Like you're, you're continuing to improve leaps and bounds in that area. Like it's really about you never losing confidence in the middle of the flex. And yeah, you're doing an amazing job at that. I think it's been awesome. So what is yours? Share your statement. So in 2022, I committed to start discovering who I am without being defined by what I do. And I crafted this statement out of a personal desire, but I committed to it because of what my colleagues were pouring into me during this round of start stops. And I didn't know exactly what I was asking for when I ended up committing to this. And I certainly had no idea what it would look like. I just knew that it's like, holy cow, what's this going to look like? Because my life up until that point at the time that we did that was just work, 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 work. and this whole one thing commitment, even though that process of unfolding the workaholism and pride of performance and all the things that was just keeping me tied up in knots as a leader and stuff, it was almost like I was in phase three of that unraveling, but the yarn got pulled really hard (laughs) in 2022. Like the last part of the thread had to come and it was like me hanging on to like a knot. So imagine a ball of yarn and you get it all the way unraveled. And then you get to the part where there's just a big old knot. And I feel like that's where 2022 found me. And the knot really came out in May. And we're just now in September. (laughs) 
getting through untangling the deeply hard and troubling knot is how I feel. So I definitely feel like I'm way better in discovering who I am without being defined by what I do. I'm actually doing more things besides work these days than I ever have in the last 10 years for sure. And I'm discovering that I enjoy other things besides work. And I find myself just putting work into a container now. And it's a part of what I'm doing. It's not who I am or all that I am. And so it's been a very emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual journey for me in this one thing commitment. And I have to thank you for making sure that you did the fact-finding work to determine what an annual planning session should look like in the EOS way. (laughs) Because had you not, there's no one else on our team that would have dug that deep to find out that detail about how should we be doing it. And I just need to thank you for that and for you bringing your gift and putting yourself out there knowing that you were going to have to do the same work and understanding it more than the rest of us did at the time. Hmm. Because this one thing commitment is bigger than any word or anything we've ever done in the 10 years that I've been here at TBL. Because it's about more than me and it's about the greater good. And typically those words are just kind of all about you and your growth. But this one thing commitment has everybody else in your life that you're tied to on your team in it. That's so true. You know, I never thought about that. You're right. You're absolutely right. Hmm. And you know, what's happening is what I hope is that each of us who made those one thing commitments to each other, that we felt our relationship grow and build and we felt we saw our trust bloom even beyond what we thought it was, or we were able to see where we were blind and not trusting each other. Yes. So I was just hoping that as a trust builder, that it would actually help us build trust. And I feel like personally it has. Oh, yes. I would uh, agree with that a hundred percent. I can't, I mean, like every year, this is not a one and done thing. This is something you do every year because you're, you're never arriving. You know, you're never going to arrive. There's something you can always start or stop doing (laughs) in the next season. Right. So for sure, I'm very, very happy with in um, putting this into play for us as a leadership team. And and we even want to do this for the rest of our team, right? So it was just our leadership team and our annual planning last year. So this year, uh, we would like to also invite the rest of the team to To do do it with their teams, you know? That's right. Because I I think what's amazing about it is, especially if you read the EOS Life, which there's an episode about discovering your ideal entrepreneurial life. uh, If you guys haven't heard that, go back and listen to that podcast. But doing the work you love with the people you love, being compensated appropriately, having time for other passions and things like that, that doing the work you love with the people you love, this is the people, how you figure out if you're doing things with the people you love. Because when you're doing things with the people you love, you trust them. Doesn't mean it's always easy, but you do trust them. You trust that they have the greater good philosophy and consciousness at the very core of who they are. You're exhibiting your core values most of the time and your behaviors with each other. And when you hit the big, hard, hard walls, you can work through those things together and trust each other and stay happy and have joy in the middle of that thing, too. So I've loved it. I am going to disclaimer everything around growth to say, guys, you don't grow in the red. So you're going to feel every ounce of growth you ask for when you want it. And depending on how hard you want to play, this one thing commitment will help you discover that. So is there anything else that you would like to share with our listeners about one thing commitments? I really think that they should all try to to step out and do this with their team member you know, whoever that is in their business, even if it's their spouse who's doing the business with them or a friend or whatever, a two-person team, you can do this. That's right. Because it's a principle of leveraging the asset that is um, having others in your life. They can see things that you can't see. 
so we can, like you had said earlier, we can craft our own like growth statements and things, but it's always coming from one source. And so if we're blind to it, we'll never be able to grow in it. And so being able to use, uh, capitalize on that um, asset that is your team member that sees you every day, <laughs> sees what you struggle with that you might not even know you're struggling with. Um, that you're annoying, by the way, <laughs> to some extent, you know. So I just, I think it's, why not? It's such a, it's, there's so many um, returns on investment there. So like, not only do you build trust with your fellow team member, but you also get some uh, insight on your own growth and areas that you can work on. And then your team member, you can speak into their lives and then they can see that and they can grow as well. So it's like, it's a win-win for sure. Yeah, I agree. It's a triple scoop thing for me. Like it's a great investment of time, energy, and money to do this. And I think so many times when people start doing planning, they just want to get right to the scorecard and right to how we going to make money. <laughs> And it's just bigger than that. And if you just make it about data and money, like that's not, you're not going to have more pay, play and profit that way. And peopling is hard and it's not easy and collaborating and trusting and being a part of something bigger than you is going to have challenges and you need to invite the growth. And this is a great tool to do that in. Yes. Invite the growth. That's good. Mm hmm. Yeah, so invite the growth, y'all. That's what the annual planning should be about and making sure that you've got things on your agenda to invite the growth, not just the historical, this is what we did, this is what's working, this is not what's not working. Like, how are we intentionally going to grow? And pop our lid, as Job Maxwell would say, which your leaders need to always be doing. So thanks for coming on the show, Newman, talking about one thing commitments. Yes, I love it. And I think we're doing pretty darn good in our first year of One Thing Commitments. That's a wrap, folks. Thanks for joining us on another episode of the Pay, Play, Profit podcast. Before we walk away from the table, it's sharing is caring time because we are on a mission as a team at the bottom line to multiply and to help you multiply too. We are sowing seeds in faith to serve 100,000 entrepreneurs like you by the year 2030. We want to help others reimagine their entrepreneurial success with simple, practical, powerful solutions. This podcast is the place we want people to plug in and keep coming back to. If you haven't yet, please hit subscribe wherever you choose to listen. You can find us on all the major platforms, including YouTube. We'd like to encourage you to join our growing community by signing up for our email list so you never miss an episode or value-added shares delivered each week. The link is in our show notes. We'd also love if you'd take a few minutes to give us a five-star review wherever you listen and share our podcast with a fellow entrepreneur that you believe would benefit from being here. Remember, every decision is a profit decision and profit is measured in time, energy, and money. We want to see triple scoops on all three kinds of yours when it comes to your pay, play, and profit. You are worthy of all the good, my friends, and so much more. Until next time, be kind to yourself and each other. See you later.